addition is referring to the process of using either addition or subtraction to solve the system of equations. So we've done graphing, we've done substitution, now we're going to do adding and subtracting. Okay, so in order to do that, you first have to kind of arrange the equations so they line up properly. Um, so that's the first step. We have to write the equations. So we have to write them so that the matching variables line up. So we write them on top of each other, but x's line up over top of x's, y's over top of y's, equal over equal, and then, then whatever they equal over whatever they equal. Step two is we add or subtract. Oh, here, first of all. Um, when we finish step one, we check to see that one of the variables so either the x or the y have matching or opposite coefficients. Okay, after we've done that, we add or subtract the equations. Then we solve it, and then after we do that, we're going to plug in the solution. So if you look here, we've already got them lined up. X's are lined up with X's, Y's are lined up with Y's, equals are lined up with equals, numbers it's lined up. One of the variables should have matching or opposite coefficients. I have a positive 6Y and a negative 6Y. 6 and 6, they match. That means I can just do addition or subtraction elimination if this happens. So this is the variable to be eliminated because the coefficients are opposites. Okay. So what will happen next is I'll take these two variables or these two equations And I'm literally going to add them together. 4x plus 3x is 7x. 6y plus negative 6y is no, there are no more y's. The y's went away. And 32 plus 3 is 35. So 7x equals 35. Divide both sides by 7 x equals 5. Now that I know what x equals, I can take this x and I can plug it into either of these and find out what y equals. Um, first or second? Okay. So I have 4 times 5 plus 6 times y equals 32. So that's 20 plus 6y equals 32. Subtract 20. 6y equals 12. Divide by your 6. y equals 2. So you found your solution, 5, 2. The next thing we do is we check if if we have a situation like this, I have a negative and a positive of the same number, then I add. So 
I can add these two together. Negative 4x plus 4x is no x's. 3y plus negative 5y gives me negative 2y. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Divide by negative 2 and you get y is negative 1. Then I plug that in at the top somewhere. Um, first or second, doesn't matter. Okay, we'll do the second this time. So 4x minus 5y equals 5. y is negative 1. 4x plus 5 equals 5 minus 5. So 4x equals 0. So what's x equal? 0. Okay. When you have a situation like this, I have y and x lined up. They're not lined up properly. I just rearrange it so... No, I just have to line them up. Yeah, that's the ordered pair. But for these, I just line it up. They're opposites, so I can add. 6x is equal to 36, so x is 6. Plug it into either equation. And it really, it doesn't matter which equation, you'll get the same answer. Uh, four. And just to show you, if I had plugged it into the other one, So I, it really, it doesn't matter which one of the equations you plug it into, you get the same answer. So 6, 1. There you go. Questions on that? So when this occurs, I have the same number, but they're not opposite signs. That's when I have to subtract. And when that happens, I have to subtract the whole equation which means that that makes this a negative, that makes that a negative, and that makes that a negative. Oh, that's not going to work out nicely. Hold on, I'm going to change this real quick. Yeah. That'll make that a positive. So, this essentially becomes 5x minus 3y equals 15, and then negative 5x minus 6y equals 12 because that negative gets distributed and it changes all the signs. So far okay? Then those x's will go away. Negative 3 and negative 6 is negative 9. 15 and 12 is 27. Divide by negative 9 and I get negative 3. Then I come back to either of these original ones. So 5x minus 3 times negative 3 equals 15. 5x minus 9 equals 15. 5x equals 24. Divide it by 5. And when this happens, Just leave it as an improper fraction that is perfectly acceptable. The other one, the sum of two numbers is negative 10. Negative time, no, so negative 3 times the first number minus the second number equals 2. Now you could do this either way when you look at this. You could either do the elimination 
like we've been doing, where you could decide you like the substitution better and you could do the substitution. I'm going to do the elimination because the y's are opposite and it just seems easier for me that way. So 3x minus 3x is negative 2x. Negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. So x is 4. And then x is 4. So if I subtract 4 from both sides, y is negative 14. Um, it's the m, so it goes in front of the x. Right? So Cheryl earns $8.50 an hour and Jackie earns $7.50 an hour. During a typical week, Cheryl and Jackie earn $2.99.50 together. Okay? So normally, I'm going to use C for Cheryl and J for Jackie. So normally, if Cheryl is at $8.50 an hour and Jackie is at $7.50 an hour, they are earning $299.50 a week. Okay. One week Jackie doubles her work hours. Okay. Cheryl stays the same, but Jackie's doubles. So her hourly rate stays the same, but she ends up working twice as many hours, so we're going to throw a two in there. And they earn $412. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, I saw that. Well, let me write that a little smaller. Come on, let me fix it. Thank you. This makes that a 13, because it's twice as many hours. So this becomes 850C plus 750J is equal to 299.50, and 850C plus 13J is equal to 412. Because these are the same, I have to subtract this whole equation, which makes this a negative, this a negative, and this a negative, because they were all positive. So I get negative 750j, because 13 minus 7, or 750 minus 13 is negative 750, and um, just really don't feel like doing that in my head right now. Negative one twelve fifty. Okay. I'm going to divide both sides by negative seven fifty. And so Jackie works fifteen hours normally. Okay. So now we have to figure out how many hours Cheryl works. And we can use either one of these original two to plug it in. I'm going to just use the smaller one. Okay, I already know that 750 times 15 is 112.50, right? So I can plug that in right here. I'm going to subtract 112.50 from both sides. And I am going to get, well, then I'm going to run out of room, is what I'm going to do. Okay, so um, 
850C is equal to 187. So Cheryl works 22 hours. We have a um, birthday party. Tamara and Adelina are throwing a birthday party for their friend. Tamara invited five fewer friends than Adelina. That means Tamara, Tamara, I guess, I don't know, I typed it different each time. Whatever. Is the same as Adelina minus five. And together, they invited 47 guests. Now, do you guys want to rearrange this so we can use elimination, or would you rather use substitution? Substitution? Okay. So I put that there. And I have A minus 5 plus A equals 47. So 2A minus 5 equals 47. So 2A is equal to 52. So I add five to both sides. Put that in there really tiny. So A is equal to 26. So she invited 26 friends. And then Tamara invited 26 minus five, so 21 friends. To a situation where your variable coefficients don't match. You have one extra step, you need to make them match before you can eliminate. Now, we look at these, I said, okay, five, two, six, three, they had nothing matches, I can choose. Do I want to make the X's match or do I want to make the Y's match? Before you make that decision, I have to, to make the X's match, I'm going to have to multiply both equations. To make the Y's match, I'm only going to have to multiply one equation. Yeah, so you can do either. We can make the X's match and eliminate that way, or we can make the Y's match and eliminate that way. It's, you'll get the correct answer either way. You just want to choose the one that makes the least work for you. And in this case, probably the Y's, because I can turn a 3 into a 6. Here, I can turn a 5 and a 2 both into a 10, but that means I have to multiply both equations. Does that make sense? Now, sometimes you're going to have to multiply both equations to make it match. Because, like, if this wasn't a 6, if this was a 3, and that was, like, a 4, then I would have to choose either X or Y, and I'd have to multiply both equations. But in this case, we lucked out. Now, I'm going to multiply by negative 2, because I'm going to turn that into a negative 6, and then I can just add. And adding is nicer than subtracting, isn't it? So, this top equation will stay exactly the same. It's the bottom of the equation that will change. Negative 2 times 2 gives me negative 4. Negative 2 times 3 gives me negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 5 gives me positive 10. Okay. Once I've done that, I've distributed that 2. Then I add them together. 5x plus negative 4x is x, 6y minus 6y is 0, negative 8 plus 10 is 2, x equals 2. Yeah, and then you can plug it into either one of the original equations to figure it out. I like this one, it's smaller. When you're doing these eliminations that you have to change stuff, try to always pick the changes that will make the least work for you. Yeah, so if you have something like this where you can turn one into the other number, pick that. If you have, if this was a 5 and a 2, and this was a 6 and a 11, 
I'm going to pick the 5 and 2 because it's easier to multiply by 5 and 2 than 6 and 11 to make things match. You know, just you want to pick the, the thing that will make the least work for you. And then same when you plug back in. Pick the one with the smaller numbers. It's easier. You're less likely to make errors that way. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm looking at this first equation. My x's are lined up. My y's are lined up. Everything's lined up properly, but nothing matches. Do you guys want to get rid of the x's or the y's? The x's, because I can make these match easiest. What am I going to multiply by? Okay. That is going to turn this into 6x minus 2y equals 10 and negative 6x plus 14y equals 38. I'm going to add those together. Let's just do that. Okay. 6x and negative 6x goes away. Negative 2 plus 14 is 12. 38 and 4, 10 is 48. Divide by 12. And y equals 4. Now which equation do you like to plug it back into? Not too bad. All right. Here, I'm not lined up properly. So I first have to rearrange. And then I can do the elimination. Okay. So I'm going to move this Q over here so it'll be lined up. And when I do that, I'm going to have 3R minus 2Q equals negative 4. So, to eliminate, I can either make both of these match or I can make both of those match. And either way, it's not going to be multiplying more than one equation. I can multiply the top equation by positive 2. And then I'll have 2Q and negative 2Q. Or I can multiply the bottom equation by negative 3. And I'll have 9 and negative 9. Preference? Do you want to get rid of Q or R? Okay. So I'm going to multiply this by 2. And I'm going to get 18R plus 2Q equals 26. And I'm going to get 3R minus 2Q equals negative 4. Then I can add those together. 18 and 3 is 21R. The Q's go away. 26 minus 4. Did I do that right? Yeah. 2Q3. Just to make these match, you get to choose. We could have made the R's match and multiplied this by negative 3. Or we can make the Q's match and multiply this by positive 2. All right. This is actually, I think I, I did a typo. I think it was supposed to work out to an even number, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to tell you what to do if you run into this situation. Now, we can plug the R back in and deal with the fraction. Or we can come back and multiply this one by negative 3 to get rid of the R and do a second elimination to find Q. I 
I'm just saying like you have options. Um, it is going to be, yes, hold on, let me finish this one really quick. I'm going to add those together. I get 7Q is equal to 25, so Q is equal to 25 sevenths. So see, you didn't have to actually deal with the fractions, so you can go back and do a second elimination.